Ladies and gentlemen, uh, and a very warm welcome. Uh, it is my great honor uh, to be able to start uh, and launch the second day uh, of the sixth edition of the Prague Agenda Conference. My name is David Kral and I am the Director of Policy Planning Department here in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, the second day, uh, as you see, is a political conference, it's called the political part of the conference. And uh, again, it is a great honor for me to be able to introduce and welcome here two keynote speakers. First of all, I will give a floor to my boss, uh, His Excellency Mr. Lubomir Zauralek, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Czech Republic, to deliver his keynote statement. Mr. Minister, please. Good morning, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Also for me, it's honor and pleasure to welcome you at the Minister of Foreign Affairs in our beautiful Chernin Palace. This building has become a traditional venue for political and academic experts to meet and discuss the latest development in the field of nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament under the title Prague Prague Agenda. Special welcome and thanks go to our distinguished guests and to the organizers. I'm speaking about Institute of International Relations, Charles University, Metropolitan University, Prague Vision Foundation, and colleagues from our ministry, Mr. Kral and others. As we all know, this conference owes its existence to President Obama and his nuclear agenda. I can still remember his famous Prague April 2009 speech, this genuine and profound commitment to a future better world without nuclear weapons. This declaration, yes we can. This Obama encouraging call resonates so much also in me. Another even follow it, bringing so many hopes. The 2010 US-Russia summit in Prague concluding the New START Treaty. Unfortunately, not so much optimism remained from that period. Despite this, or perhaps because of this, it's our obligation to continue Obama's effort and keep Prague on the map of places where nuclear issues are discussed. Maybe we can say today, yes, we must, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe that's how Obama's words should be restated in today's changing and more and more dangerous world. I have been informed that yesterday our academics had a fruitful discussion on topics like putting the Prague agenda in context, looking back, looking forward, looking beyond, and uh, weapons of mass destruction, norms, and international order, followed by a closed brainstorming workshop on the topic, uh, the future of the Prague agenda under a new US administration. I'm confident that today you will build and reflect on some ideas from yesterday from a more political perspective. Similarly, as in previous years, we would like this conference to be an opportunity to summarize the achievements as well as remaining challenges in nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation since President Obama's 2009 speech in our capital. Just to enumerate a few milestones in this field from the recent past that drew the attention of international community that will definitely occur in presentations of our distinguished guests. The 2015 Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference that arose question on the future prospects of NPT, developments in North Korea, North Korean nuclear and missile programs, negotiations on the Iranian nuclear program leading to the conclusion of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, and the division 
in opinions how to proceed with the nuclear disarmaments, where new initiatives like, for example, legally binding agreement on destruction of nuclear weapons occurred and gained support from a lot of non-nuclear countries, etc. The developments I have mentioned are views into the past. However, the elephant in the room that surely will be mentioned and discussed by our guests and our perspectives for the future with the one principal question. How much the newly elected US president and his administration will feel obliged to keep the legacy of President Obama in the field of nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation? And maybe also a question, what type of continuity or discontinuity we may expect and what may be the impacts on the global scene. I know how difficult this current situation because in our current world it's much more difficult, for example, to speak about inspections and supervision on armament because, for example, these uh, cyber weapons are new more difficult problem. I know how it is difficult now to uh, push for uh, some willingness to uh, declare capacities of these cyber weapons because it's really not so, uh, that's, that's the reason why it's not so easy to supervise and inspect this kind of weapons. But I'm convinced that we have to speak about it also uh, um, maybe also not to accept only these difficulties. And our conference does not have the ambition to save the world from nuclear weapons and from their proliferation. Even bigger and uh, maybe more ambitious fora failed in this regard. But we think, and I am convinced, that the open and free exchange of views between the diplomats, officials, from institutions, academicians, think tankers, students, NGO, representatives or journalists may and maybe must serve the purpose to better orient ourselves in the complex nuclear agenda and to understand how nuclear topics influence the world politics and international security. That's why I am glad that you are here today and I would like to express my hope that today's discussion will be also fruitful, open-minded, and enlighten new perspectives on this important agenda. Let me wish you good day, really interesting discussions, and also pleasant stay here in Prague. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Minister, for um, uh, having introduced the second day and also for sketching us, let's say, some of the new challenges that uh, lie ahead of us. Uh, well, the man who, to some extent, we owe the idea of this conference, uh, Mr. Barack Obama, the President of the United States, unfortunately, cannot be here with us today. As we know, he's already made his last trip to Europe in the tenure, but I think it's um, uh, quite symbolical uh, that uh, we're meeting here today at the time uh, that his tenure of the presidential office closes. Uh, and uh, I can say perhaps that we hope that uh, the agenda that he started here in 2007 will endure even after and continue even after, the, uh, uh, after he leaves the office of the president. Nevertheless, I'm very happy that uh, Mrs. Jessica Cox, who is representing the National Security Council of the United States, uh, can deliver uh, the message from President Obama uh, on his behalf here today. I will refrain from uh, introducing Jessica in detail because she's also the speaker on the first panel, so I'll leave that to my colleague Ivan who, who will take uh, the moderation after me. But uh, Jessica, please, if you can uh, convey the message on behalf of the President. Thank you very much. I send greetings to all those participating in the Sixth Prague Agenda Conference, and I extend my thanks to the Czech Minister of Foreign Affairs Lubomir Zerorlik for hosting this important event. Eight years ago in Prague, I outlined America's vision of a world free of nuclear weapons and urged the global community to pursue disarmament and nonproliferation. 
I am proud of the accomplishments we have achieved since then. We have significantly reduced the amount of vulnerable nuclear material globally, shut off Iran's pathway to a bomb, and implemented strategic arms control with Russia. Over the course of my administration, we have held four nuclear security summits to galvanize the international community around ridding the world of special nuclear materials wherever possible and increasing the security of the material that remains. These efforts have resulted in 16 countries in Taiwan removing all nuclear materials and have helped secure the equivalent of the material needed to make more than 150 nuclear bombs. When I took office, I was also confronted by Iran's burgeoning nuclear program. After two years of strong diplomacy, the United States, together with our international partners, achieved something that decades of animosity had not. A comprehensive long-term deal with Iran that if fully implemented will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. And finally, now in its sixth year, the New START Treaty with Russia has provided predictability and stability in the composition and movement of Russia's strategic nuclear forces at a time when we need it most. When the treaty's central limits go into effect in 2018, we will have reduced our nuclear stockpiles to the lowest levels since the 1950s. We have also made significant strides to strengthen and revalidate the nuclear nonproliferation regime as the basis for cooperation among states. The Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty remains the cornerstone of the global nonproliferation regime, and America's commitment to strengthening the treaty remains unwavering. To this end, the United States has established the Peaceful Uses Initiative, which includes a significant increase in funding to help foster the development of peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Additionally, the United States has supported the development of mechanisms, both domestic and international, that encourage the growth of safe and secure nuclear power in ways that prevent proliferation and promote global security. There are no shortcuts to a world without nuclear weapons, but I'm confident it's within our reach if we work towards peace and security together as a global community. Thank you. So again, thanks very much to both uh, keynote speaker for their uh, opening and welcoming remarks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will jump direct, directly into the first panel. Uh, so I would like to invite uh, the speakers, as well as the moderator, my colleague Ivan Yastrap, who is uh, uh, Junior Deputy Minister and uh, Director of the United Nations Department, who will take over from me. Uh, also on my behalf, let me wish you a very, very fruitful day uh, with a lot of thoughts uh, and a good discussion. Thank you very much.